from the very beginning of the, my, my time at the San Diego Natural History Museum, which was 18 and a half years ago. The very first day I hit the ground, I said that we were going to begin a, <clears throat> a very serious strategic planning process. And we spent a year doing that. <clears throat> and we literally changed the mission and the focus of the, the entire museum from a worldwide, you know, natural history museum to fo one focused on Southern California, Baja California. And um, we spent a year in the planning and we involved everybody in the, the institution and all the stakeholders. So we had meetings at all different levels and all of it fed into the team that was actually doing the, the planning itself. And when it came out, there were, I, I, I believe, I remember there were something like 200 uh, participants in that, you know, in our organization, and what, that's double the size of the staff at the time, triple the size of the staff at the time. And we did <coughs> community surveys and we did stakeholder surveys and donors and uh, foundations and uh, uh, we just talked to everybody and, and it was very, very inclusive. We, and we did focus groups. If, are you a member of the museum? No, why not? And <clears throat> um, so all that data fed in and we did a 10-year plan. Now, 10 years in a business is an eternity and I know they do them in, for one and three years, but what we do is we do 10-year plans, but they're big plans. Uh, that involved building a new building, uh, raising the money for it, uh, and changing the entire focus of the museum. So we, do, we, we really firmly believe in planning and we really firmly believe in bringing everybody into the plan so there's none of the, well, why am I always the last person to know kind of thing. So I think the planning, the strategic planning has really helped a great deal in terms of a consistency and a direction and focus. The last thing to complete in the 2002 plan was the 2012 plan, 2012 to 2022 plan. And we, we, we were right in the middle of a building project. Uh, I was up to my ears in legal problems with the builder, and I said, you know, I think we're going to delay the plan for a year or two, and the board said, the board and staff said, no, we're not. We're going to do it. And we did it, and it was really hard uh, finding time in the midst of the other things to do, but we did it, and we're about, you know, halfway through that now, and we're right on target. So there, there was a big culture shift in a lot of ways. And one of those is when we decided to focus on the region, that was the strength of our collections. I mean, we've been a museum since 1874. We got 9.3 million specimens. The curators before that plan were off in the Caribbean, the Mediterranean, the South Pacific. They were everywhere but in our region. I, told, I said that, you know, and all, everybody agreed, all of our donors and, and friends, almost everybody agreed except for the research division that we needed to focus on the region. And they kept saying, we can't find money to, to do research in our region. And I said, well, here's the rule. At least one major research project in the region. And most of them quit and left. And the, the, the board would say, oh, isn't it sad the research floor is empty? And I said, well, it, it's, um, it, that's the good news. And they said, why is that? And I said, now we can bring people on that, that want to do work in the region. And since we've done that, I mean, that was a huge shift. Since we've done that, we've built up, we, we are the, the authorities on natural history in the region. We have a whole team of people. In addition to that, <clears throat> half of our region Three quarters of our region is in Baja California, Mexico. That so we looked at that and we said, well, then we've got to have Mexicans on the board. We've got to have a binational advisory board. When we do expeditions, we have to involve Mexican universities and researchers. When we publish, we have to do that. We have to go bilingual. I mean, the, all of those things we started in 1991, and they, they and and they've just proven to be the the, the golden egg. Uh, we now have people bought into it so that uh, 
you know, there's no doubt about who, who to go to on that kind of information. And grant money comes in and contract money comes in. And uh, it, it's been financially extremely successful and rewarding as well. The most fun for me is when I hear board members articulating that mission in the same, uh, in their own words. For example, one of the board members who's from Mexico said that, do you realize that the only species that recognizes the border is the human species? Powerful statements. And, uh, and so they're all, they've got it all in their own words. It, you know, I can't even give you the whole memorized spiel on the natural history, but I can tell you it concern, it's the natural history of the region, it's the origin and, and evolution of, of life and, and uh, geology of the region, and it's to inspire everybody um, into uh, conserving and um, in preserving the region, and, um, and, and it, it really has worked for us. And I, I think the biggest surprise is by focusing on the region, we're of international significance. I mean, our film, Ocean Oasis, and the research that we've done on the islands in the Sea of Cortez has led the UN to declare the um, Sea of Cortez a World Heritage Site, which upped the level of protection of it. Now, that's pretty cool for a museum to be able to do that. We've, we've trained um, uh, teachers throughout Baja California in our binational education program. We wrote the curriculum. We used the film Ocean Oasis as the basis of it, uh, and we've distributed that to. Um, we've trained 3,600 teachers, and they they reach about 80,000 students a year in a little fishing village in Bahia de los Angeles. Um, the villagers were all fishermen, but and the big problem was the big Japanese trawlers would come through with nets 50 miles long and they would make a pass through those islands and they would just catch everything. Sea turtles and uh, whales and dolphins and the vaquita, which is near extinction and so on. Well, we did an education program again with conservation organizations. We wrote a book on the natural history of that mid-drift island where all the islands are, <clears throat> the mid-drift island area of the Sea of Cortez. The villagers voted to make that a national park with a one-mile reserve around each island. <clears throat> Even they can't fish. Um, we've worked with conservation organizations who have gone in and taught the villagers to be eco-tour guides. They fish the edges, and it's much better than it was before, and the trawlers can't come through anymore. So th <laughs> that wouldn't have been possible if we had remained this you know, natural history museum of the world. Um, now, so all of our permanent exhibits, um, all of our education programs emphasize the region. We, in our traveling exhibition program, we bring in things that compare and contrast to the region. Um, and everybody gets that. I mean, it's not, it's not a surprise. Um, but all of it's held together with that glue of the strategic plan. Uh, and, and the continually visiting the plan and the budgets that budget toward the plan. Um, so it, it's just been, and, and, I, and I think the, um, the inclusion of everybody in it as well.